Welcome back to another screencast about using Mendix. In this screencast, we're going to look at doing something that really feels like it isn't at the heart of what we've been looking at in Mendix because it's not really data focused, but it'll give you a feeling about how you can bring ordinary programming and logic into your app. So what we're going to do is explore the idea of uh, creating a number guessing game where the system comes up with a number between one and a hundred, the user guesses the number and gets feedback about whether it's too high, too low, or whether they got the, the right answer. In this screencast, we're going to start with a simpler version of this using the capabilities of the web modeler. And in a future screencast, we'll see what we can do with actually adding a little bit more using the desktop modeler. So we're going to go ahead and use the brewery app. We're going to assume that this game has been added to the app to entertain people while they're waiting for their beer to come to the table. The first thing we're going to do is go to navigation and we're going to add a new item. We can call this um, beer guess. It's a pretty lame name for a game. And then we can pick an icon. Um, we can make it maybe a question question mark. And we're going to go ahead and say this is going to um, do nothing right now because we'll see in a moment we're going to need a microflow to make this thing work. So right now we've added beer guests and uh, actually you know what we'll we'll go ahead and have this open a page and then we'll see that we need a microflow. So for right now we're going to say this is going to open a page. It's going to be a new page. We can call this page guessing game and we'll make it a dashboard actually what we're going to do is is make this a a blank page and we're going to add everything from scratch so we create the blank page and the idea here is let's actually start almost with a wireframing exercise so we're going to bring a um, hero header here, um, which is the, the standard title we use. Um, and the title might be Guess How Many Beers. And then the text might be something like Guess uh, a Number Between one and a hundred. Okay. And then what we might do is let's, let's actually, uh, eventually we're going to see that we're going to need data for this, but right now we're going to pretend like we have the data and we're going to explore this. So under toolbox, um, we're going to go to widgets and we're going to add a data view. So notice ordinarily when we have a starting page, we have a list of things. But right now we're going to dive right into a uh, data view. And the idea here is that we um, actually um, are, in order to have a form to fill in, we need data behind it. So you'll see this is a little weird. It, we really just want variables in a sense, but we're going to uh, actually have a form here. So what the form might have would be if I go to toolbox it would have a text box right where you could type in your guess so we'll go here and we have a text box um, the uh, so um, the label of the text box would be guess and again we're getting errors but that's okay for now we're gonna fix all this in a little bit and then what we might want to do is have um, uh, a button that says something like check answer. So we'll go back to toolbox and we'll have uh, 
button. Notice that I've checked widget here. And the button will be, uh, this button is going to um, have to do some calculations. So it's actually going to call a microflow. So we'll bring this here. And uh, the problem is that this button is not inside of the data view. So let's see if we can do that. OK, so now the button is inside. You can see inside the data view. And um, we can change the caption to check answer. OK. And now what we have is a situation where when the user um, chooses the game, it comes up. They can enter a guess, they can click check answer, and then they're going to uh, get some sort of message about how it went, okay? So the problem is that there's no data behind this. Uh, so we're gonna need an entity. So we can go over to domain model, and we're going to add an entity. Um, this entity isn't at the moment gonna really be stored in the database, but we need one anyway. So it's kind of like a temporary object, if you will. So I drag this out here. We'll call it um, guessing game. Okay, and our attribute right now uh, that we have is guess, which will be an integer, so that the uh, user can enter the, the guess. But in order to actually check or guess against an answer, we need a place to store what the actual target guess is. So we'll make something called target. And that's also an integer. And so now what we have is we have an entity where we can have the user enter a guess and we'll compare that guess to a target. Again, you may be thinking, well, where's the data? Are we really storing data? Just think of this as kind of temporary data Whereas in uh, other tools, you might actually have variables that are outside of, quote, the database. Here, everything is a part of the database. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our page, the guessing game page. And now what we can do is if we click on guess and go up to data view, and we can say that the entity we're going to pick to associate with this is the guessing game entity. So we do select. And now when we go to guess here, uh, we can actually, now that we have this data view connected to uh, this um, guessing game entity, we can now select the guess as where we're going to store this. Okay? So right now we, we have a way for the user to enter something. But we don't actually have a, um, a way to do the logic and so forth. So let's go back to the menu. And let's go to our beer guess item. The problem with trying to open a page, and you can try this on your own if you want, is that if you open a page that's got a data view, okay, so you open a page like this, this data view is associated with a single record. And you, uh, the question that Mendix is going to have is which record? So you can't go right from a menu item to a page with a single record. You have to actually find the record. So in this case, what we're going to do is rather than having this open a page, which wouldn't work if we're opening a page that's associated with, with an object, an object that doesn't even exist, when you click beer guess, it's going to run a microflow. And this is where it gets interesting. So we need a microflow. We're going to do new microflow. We'll be we'll call it start game. Okay. And the first thing we need to do is we need to create this object we're going to look at. So I look here for create object, drag it out. Um, if I look at properties, which object are we going to create? We're going to create a guessing game object. And then um, we need to um, actually set some values. So the, the value we want to set here 
is we want to set the value of the target. So when we create a new game, we want to give the user something to guess. Now, ideally, we'd want to pick this number randomly. Turns out, as far as I can tell, that in the web modeler, you don't have that option. In the desktop modeler, we will. So just to kind of get a feel for how this would work and how we could prototype in the web modeler, I'm just going to type in a number. Okay, so we'll put in 27 as our number. Okay, so now what we have, again, if you look, we have the number 27, so our target is set to 27. And again, we'll be able to do better than this in a future uh, podcast or, or uh, screencast. So the next thing we want to do now that we've got a new guessing game object and we've set a target so the user can guess something, is we want to um, open up a new page. By the way, since at this point when we're creating an object, there's nothing showing in our uh, web page, we don't have to do the refresh. And we're not storing this object, so we don't have to commit it. So we come back here. And now we're going to show a page. So we drag this over here. The page we're going to show is the guessing game. Okay. And the object that we're going to pass to that page to tell it which object to show is this new guessing game we created. Great. So at this point, uh, we should be able to launch our um, guessing game object and and actually open the page. Really uh, quickly checking. If you look here, we're going to have an error, and the error here is the check answer button uh, is is supposed to actually do something. It's it's connected to a microflow, and and notice the reason we got a microflow is we're not actually trying to save this data. We're just trying to do something with it. So a microflow is where we do that. So we just need to add a microflow here. We're going to create a, a new microflow. We'll call it check answer. We'll create it. And now notice that in this microflow, when we go, because the button was inside of the data view, right? So I will just quickly show you that. If we go back to guessing game, we click on this button. Notice that it's, it's actually in the data view. Then when we go to the microflow, uh, uh, we actually get the contents of the data view there. Excellent. So now we can we can test our answer. So we're going to make a decision here. It's called an exclusive split. Drag it here. Uh, if we choose this, the caption here could be correct. All right, and then. Um, if it's correct, uh, we got to decide if it's correct, right? So the condition we're checking is we want to, first of all, we're, we're doing an expression here in the microflow. And what we want to do is compare the, um, actually what we want to do is we want to test if two things are equal. So if I scroll down to operators, Notice how now it's it's kind of built an expression where we have blank equals blank. So if I go here to the little dot thing, I can compare my guess. And this is um, may not look like this doesn't look like SQL, for example, but this is how we show a guess, uh, show an attribute. I can click here. I want to compare that to my target. Right. So if they're equal. If they're equal, this is the branch that's true. What we're going to do is we're going to pop up a message that says, um, congratulations, you won. And then we'll take the user back to the home page. So we can go to toolbox. We can do a show message. The message here can say, you won. Okay, um, and then the next thing we can do is we can um, close the page, All right? So that'll take us back to home. If they didn't get it right, um, 
we can pop up a message. And eventually our message would let the user test, uh, you know, give the user a hint about high or low. But right now what we can do for this message is we can say, um, uh, try again. Okay. And we'll go right back to the page we were on. So we don't need to close it. Okay. So at this point, let's go ahead and see if this works. And now that we've made these changes, we can go ahead and publish and take a look at how things work. And in a subsequent screencast, we'll take a look at how we can improve this and move to the next level.